March 1998. ATF agent William Queen stared at the mirror, picking out a piece of thread off his patch. He took a deep breath and stepped out. The gritty world of outlaw motorcycle gangs awaited him, and he was about to dive headfirst into the heart of darkness, into the world of the notorious Mongols Motorcycle Club. The mission? Infiltrate, gather evidence, and bring down one of the most dangerous criminal organizations in the country. Development Originally formed in Montebello, California on December 5, 1969, the Mongols started as a Chicano motorcycle club as an alternative to Hell's Angels, whose members were all white at the time. What started as a humble group of Vietnam War veteran bikers transformed into one of the most feared and notorious West Coast outlaw biker clubs in just 15 years. Despite committing crimes, charges against the Mongols were often dismissed since witnesses were terrorized into not testifying. That's when authorities decided that if they wanted to collect evidence, they must infiltrate the Mongols. Enter a special agent of the Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives Bureau, or ATF for short, William Queen. Growing up in North Carolina, William Queen is the son of a treasury officer, his father himself working undercover to bust moonshiners during the 1950s and 60s. At the start of his career, William Queen, better known as Billy, served as a special forces soldier in the U.S. Army during the time of the Vietnam War. After that, he started working as a police officer in North Carolina, where he worked for approximately six years. Billy then joined the United States Border Patrol for two years and subsequently joined ATF. Queen's early operations were a daring dive that included infiltrating the Aryan Nation and Ku Klux Klan, which are white supremacist organizations. He also served on an ATF special response team, a federal equivalent of a SWAT team. Since the first step was to blend in with the group, Billy made sure to modify his physical appearance, just like a typical freedom-loving, long-bearded, and wild-haired member of a motorcycle club. The Beginning of the Undercover Mission the undercover mission began, codenamed Operation Ivan. Billy met a confidential informant for the ATF, named Sue at a bar. Sue posed as a tweaker, which means a methamphetamine addict, who often scored meth from the Mongols. Billy insisted that the woman introduce him to two of her contacts, Rocky and Rancid. Soon after meeting these members of the Mongols, the ATF informant kept on saying how she knew Billy, and soon Billy realized she was high on meth. She was talking out the side of her neck, Billy thought this is bad news, and it could compromise the operation, so he got her the hell out of there. The next time Billy went to the bar, he met Donald, Red Dog Jarvis, a sergeant at arms for the Mongols. Another fellow member told Red Dog that they had heard through the grapevine that Sue would introduce a cop to them. Red Dog asked Billy who he was, and then told him that if he turned out to be a problem, quote, I'm gonna cut your throat, end quote. Billy got nervous and scared, but he left and joined fellow revelers at the bar. Even though Billy remained calm, Red Dog was still suspicious of him. Now the game of cat and mouse begins. To fully infiltrate the club, Billy needs to gain the trust of Red Dog. Before anyone could be a member of the Mongols, they have to fill out a detailed application including information about their background, social security number, friends, family, their phone numbers, the schools or colleges they went to, and even their birth certificate. The ATF provided a fake identity for Billy St. John, bank accounts, credit cards, and even a driver's license. If anyone slipped up in one place giving their information, they'd face severe consequences. All the applications have to be ratified by Red Dog, and he was still suspicious of Billy. Even though Billy provided him with everything, Red Dog still had his doubts but had no evidence to the contrary. Finally, after five months of the mission, Billy Queen was invited to join the Mongols MC. In 1998, Billy successfully infiltrated the San Fernando Valley chapter and wore the club's three patches. As Billy was making his place in the Mongols, he witnessed drug deals, theft, and countless crimes. One particular day, Billy traveled to a self-made shooting range to practice with other members, and there he met Red Dog again, who asked Billy how long he was at the academy. Billy said, what do you mean by this? Red Dog then called Billy out and asked, how long were you at the police academy? But Billy said he didn't know what Red Dog was talking about. Red Dog continued grilling Billy, who sent you here? Billy still insisted that no one sent him. Red Dog said, that means if I put a bullet in your head right now, you're saying that no one will know where to start looking for your body? Billy replied with a yes. Red Dog then ordered Billy to set up targets in the field. As Billy started to walk back, Red Dog let off a shot close to Billy's face. Even after this harrowing event, Billy continued recording and documenting the crimes each day during the undercover mission despite the gut-wrenching fear. Billy's growing loyalty toward the club. 
To make matters worse, this mission was affecting Billy's personal life. Even though he was divorced, he was the father of two, and after the mission started, he was completely detached from his personal life. During the Christmas of 1999, his mother died in Greensboro, making things worse. Billy was confused about who he was. He questioned himself whether he was the ATF agent William Queen or Billy St. John, the Mongol MC member and 1% biker. Billy started thriving in the Brotherhood. The love and loyalty Mongols have for each other reminded him of his time in the military. He often felt very guilty about the fact that he was betraying these members. He realized that after the death of his mother, all the members of the gang have shown him love and compassion. On the other hand, Billy couldn't help but notice that his colleagues at the Bureau of ATF hardly even acknowledged his mother's passing. As a matter of fact, all they wanted to know was when he was going to go back out in the field. Billy wanted to tell his Mongol brothers the truth and end the investigation. Just climb on his bike and ride off. He came that close, he said, almost touching together his forefinger and thumb in an interview. Development of Operation Ivan One evening in October 1998, Billy was prospecting at the Mongols hangout when he was approached by a Mongol named Evil. That night, he was exhilarated knowing that now he had a full patch of Mongol rocker, the top rocker, the final patch. This means now he is a full member of Mongols MC. His companions embraced Billy and welcomed him as a brother. He then used to attend regular meetings known as church. Just after 30 days of being patched in, Billy rose to the rank of Secretary of Treasures of the San Fernando Valley chapter. That's when Billy really started receiving a lot of information about crimes directly from the members of the club and their books. In the book, he knew what the secret codes meant, like beepers being code for guns. He started giving these written copies of evidence to ATF so that they could start preparing a strong criminal case. Billy was now in the inner circle of the gang, and one day Rocky showed him the collection of guns as he invited Billy to his father's home. The collection included shotguns, pistols, rifles, and even fully automatic weapons. Rocky asked Billy if he knew any dealers for drugs, to which he said yes and called confidential informants to pretend that they were the dealers. It was one of dozens of evidence that Billy had established to use against the Mongols. Murder of Daniel Herrera However, the major crime that sealed the deal for Billy and the ATF to hit the gang with serious sanctions was the murder that took place in the fall of 1999 on November 12th. Adrian Gutierrez, who was known as Panhead, was guilty of a fatal attack on Daniel Herrera outside of a club in which Daniel was stabbed to death. Another member confessed that he had given Gutierrez a knife earlier that night before the incident. It all started inside the bar when Daniel stopped his wife Debra from socializing with Mongols. But when his wife refused, Daniel insulted her, then the Mongols saying, fuck the Mongols. Ooh, bad move. That's when the Mongols ran Daniel outside of the bar and started beating him. Panhead produced the knife and stabbed Daniel to death. The heat was now on the club so they called out a code 55, which means hiding their affiliation by not wearing the patches, avoiding contact with law enforcement, not carrying weapons or drugs, and definitely not talking about the major crimes that they have committed. To get evidence showing Gutierrez confessing to the murder, authorities supplied Billy with a car that was bugged. He was able to control the recording device from the driver's seat using a secret switch. Billy then took Gutierrez on a ride with him to Las Vegas and turned on the recorder, prodding Panhead along as he talked. Panhead Gutierrez confessed to stabbing Daniel. Billy was successful in recording the strongest evidence to use against Panhead. Moreover, Panhead also got a patch of skull and crossbones on his vest, and the only members to get this patch are those who have murdered someone for the club. Now they had him. Now, there was forensic audio and strong circumstantial evidence against Adrian Panhead Gutierrez. Final Chapter of Operation Ivan Authorities at that time had enough evidence that they decided it was time to conclude Operation Ivan. On May 19, 2000, more than 300 armed lawmen orchestrated a synchronized strike across Southern California and four states that led to the arrest and indictment of 54 gang members for the charges of drug dealing, money laundering, and murders. ATF labeled this undercover mission as its most successful biker gang infiltration. Red Dog was charged with using illegal guns, one of which he pointed at Billy at the shooting range. The San Fernando Valley chapter was also arrested with the charges of drug dealing. Then ATF headed towards arresting Panhead, holding him accountable for the haunting murder of Daniel Herrera. After arresting all the members, authorities then took Billy with them to a secret and secure location. As Billy navigated the shadowy aftermath of Operation Ivan, a cell phone call from a Mongol named Top Hat pierced the silence. 
An air of tension hung heavy as Top had inquired about Billy's well-being and his awareness of unfolding events. The atmosphere tensed further as Top Hat revealed that the Mongols had solved the mystery, identifying the covert cop among them, a guy named Preacher. In a twist that sent a shiver down his spine, Billy, against all expectations, made a daring confession. As the phone connection hung in suspended anticipation, a chilling reality settled in for Top Hat and the rest of the Mongols. Billy dropped the bombshell and said, It was me. I'm the undercover cop that busted you guys. There was a moment of silence. Then the phone clicked off. Red Dog was sentenced to three years for illegal firearm possession, but since then he has left the Mongols MC and now runs his own trucking business. He has no regrets about his past. In an interview, Red Dog said that the three years he did in prison were worth it, knowing that Billy was scared of him. As far as undercover agent Billy, he struggled adjusting to normal life. He was relocated to Texas, but his children had to be moved to Florida for their own safety. William Queen is now retired and lives in an undisclosed location. Crush Unit Source reveals that he still rides a motorcycle. Perhaps the road still calls out to him. As for the other Mongols, only one got his case dismissed. The rest were convicted, including Adrian Gutierrez. On 19th of December 2000, he was charged with second degree murder and was given a punishment of 18 years to life in prison. Outro. Mongols now have gained enough power again. Predominantly based in California, they have extended their grip across 14 states and 11 countries, including Australia, Russia, Canada, Germany, Thailand, Malaysia, New Zealand, Switzerland, and Mexico. With roughly 2,000 fully patched members, this notorious biker club now again holds the rank of fifth largest outlaw club, but having been infiltrated once, now they are always on their guard looking for another undercover agent just like William Queen. The Mongols' motto, respect few, fear none, still holds weight today. And that wraps up today's video. Thank you for hanging with us till the end. And remember, here at The Crush Unit, we educate our viewers in gang and criminal culture with a strong message of unity. Crush, community resources uniting street hoodlums. Stop the killing. Peace.